Kia ora, my name's Anna and I'm from String Bean Puppets. Welcome to Puppet Playtime at Capital E. Would you like to see a puppet? Let's say kia ora to baby Tuna. Kia ora Tuna! Kia ora! Kei te pehe koe! Kei te pae! Kia ruku tahi taua! Ai! Tahi! Rua! Toru! Fua! Baby tuna is a long finned eel. Maybe you've seen an eel in a river near where you live? But did you know that tuna are born right out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and nobody knows exactly where? And then they swim all the way to Aotearoa and they swim up our rivers where they live for 50, 60, 70, 80, even 100 years before they swim all the way back. A few years ago I made a show called Nan and Tuna about this amazing journey. And in this show, the puppets swim underwater, they're underwater puppets. And today in this workshop, we're going to make some underwater puppets inspired by the creatures that live in the ocean. So you can turn your sink, your bathtub, or even a large salad bowl into a little bit of the ocean. Do Mickey, woo -hoo! <laughs> Somebody's excited about making puppets. All right, let's start. Now, when I was making the puppets for this uh, puppet show, I was really interested in the way that materials move in the water. So before we start making the puppets, put some water in the sink or in a bathtub or in a large bowl and gather up some materials and objects that you can play with in the water from around your home. So I've gathered up some bits and pieces here. So there's a piece of plastic here, scrunch it up and put it in the water and have a look at how it moves through the water. It might remind you of something, maybe jellyfish, perhaps. Here's some fluffy wool, so I'll put that in the water and let's see. So maybe it looks a bit like some seaweed, some weed floating, that's nicely. See how things move and also whether they float or whether they sink. And if they sink, how fast they sink. Some beads. See how the beads move. It's a little feather. Feather looks like. So after playing with these materials, you might be inspired buy them to think about what creatures you might like to create, what materials you could use, how things move. So now we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make a couple of creatures that live in the ocean. Hmm, what should we make? How about a mermaid? So to make a mermaid, you're going to need the lid of an ice cream container. If you've got a white one, that's, that's good. You're going to need some, a strip of fabric for the mermaid's arms. I've got a white strip of fabric to match the ice cream container. Some fabric for the, the mermaid's tail. Um, some wool for the mermaid's hair. And some loom bands or elastic bands. And you'll also need a vivid, a hole punch if you have one, some scissors. So, just draw So the first thing, going to do is you're going to need to draw your mermaid's head and body. So just a simple outline, you just need to draw a circle for your mermaid's head, like that. And then a couple of lines for the mermaid's neck and then the mermaid's body, sort of like an oval like that. Now you can we're going to draw on some lines. We're going to cut some slits. Uh, to some slits just below. You'll need some slits just below the neck at the top of the body for the mermaid's arms. And then at the bottom of the body where you're going to attach the tail. And then at the top of the head where you're going to attach the hair. And you can also draw on your mermaid's eyes and mouth. 
There we go, little smile. So there's your mermaid's body. Now, you can cut it out. But I've already cut out one and I've also already made a hole at the top of the head. So once you've cut it out and you've made your hole and you've cut the slits, you can start attaching the other parts of the mermaid's body. So I'm going to start off by attaching the mermaid's tail. So this is a, um, a strip of material and I've already cut a slit in the middle and put some loom bands on each, to gather the bits together to make the flippers. So we'll just wrap that around like that. And now I'm going to secure it using a loom band. And the loom band will just go into the slit that I've cut in the plastic. Here we go. So there's the mermaid with her tail. And now I'll attach the arms. So I'm just going to push them into the slit that I've cut and tie a knot at the back. There we go. I've already knotted the ends of the strip of fabric to make the hands. And now the hair. So the hair, I've just cut a length of wool like this. I'm going to poke it through the hole in the top of the head. Now for each of your underwater puppets, you're going to need something on the puppet that's a bit heavy. So your puppet will sink, it won't float. And the heavy thing on the mermaid puppet is the hair because when the wool gets wet, it will become heavy and will sink the puppet. So it's important to have lots of nice long hair. And I'm going to just put the loom band around the top of the head, like a headband, and then that will just secure the hair. Like that. There we go. So there's our mermaid, ready to go for a swim. So you can just move your puppet using your hand, if you like. Or you can attach a string to the top of the head. So on this mermaid, I've, a, I've attached a string. When you put your puppet first into the water, just squeeze the water into the fabric and into the wool. So it will get nice and heavy. There we go, our mermaid's swimming. Now you might like to make a friend for your mermaid. So I'm going to show you how to make a little fish. Now to make a fish, you're going to need a stone and some fabric. I've got some orange felt here and some more loom bands. You'll need your vivid and your scissors again. So fold your fabric in half, put your stone on top. Put your stone on top. And now you're going to draw around your stone. Just making the shape a little bit bigger than the stone. There we go. So the shape's a little bit bigger than the stone. And now we're going to, that's your fish's body. Now you're going to draw on the fins. So the fins are just little triangles. And then the tail, so you just need to draw a line going out, away, sort of like another triangle at the bottom. So that's your fish on there. Now we're going to cut around, but not cutting the fold, so just cutting around the line like this. So once you've cut it out, it will look like two fishes kissing. So then once you've cut it out, you put your stone inside, and we're going to secure the stone inside using the loom bands. So first we'll wrap the loom band around the end of the tail, around the tail, that nice and tight. And then we'll put the loom band over each of the fins. Whoops. Pop the stone back in. There we go. Now you could use your uh, Vivid to draw a face on, if you like, so you can draw an eye on there. Yeah. Here's my little fish. So 
So he's ready to go swimming. Let's have a look. So again, you can move him with your hand, or like the mermaid, you can attach a string. So I made another fish before, and this one has a string on it. I also added some decorations. I cut up some of that silver fabric that I used for the mermaid's tail, and I just attached them with loom bands. I also sewed on a couple of buttons for his eyes. Now you can use this technique to make underwater puppets to make other creatures that live in the ocean. So after playing with the plastic in the water and liking how it moved and also enjoying how the wool, the white fluffy wool moved in the water, I bundled it all together and I made a jellyfish. And do you know what this creature is? What this is? So this is an octopus. So the octopus has a stone in his head, just how the fish has a stone in his body. That's making him sink. And do you see what I used? I used the dishcloth from the kitchen to make the, uh, the, as the fabric for the octopus. I've sewn on a couple of buttons for eyes and, uh, and the stone is attached. I gave the material, attached the stone using a loom band and then I cut the fabric below into eight strips and I knotted each of them up the top and then at the bottom with a loom band, I attached the a little nut, like a, from a, a nut and bolt, or a little button, or nothing. And that means that each of the octopus's legs weigh, have a different weight. So some of them float, some of them sink, so they spread out. So that's where science and art come together. So I hope you have fun making lots of different sea creature puppets to populate your bath or your sink or your salad bowl. Happy puppet making.